Welcome back to RimWorld. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time to do one of my legendary RimWorld series intros because I just, just don't have the time for it right now, unfortunately. But I'll try and throw one together over the next couple of days so we can uh, at least give this one a good intro, huh? So, I thought to myself, what would make a good idea for a series that we haven't really done yet and what I haven't personally sort of played off camera as well on RimWorld? And I also wanted something that would add an inherent difficulty without us, like the jilt pack being so super reliant on on, you know, mods that add difficulty, but then also running the risk of obviously those guys not in interacting with one another, as we found out with uh, alpha animals and that type of thing. So, how about Vampire Prison? I mean, you probably already know that from the from the thumbnail and from the title and everything, right? So we're going back to a bit more of uh, one of my traditional RimWorld series. Probably do some editing on these ones as well. We'll go back to the old thumbnail scheme and that type of thing too, just, uh, just to show that we're fully out of the way of Jilp. The full mod list will be available in the description. I'll also throw together a Steam Workshop collection when I have the time. Probably be up on tomorrow's video. Along with, uh, I'll upload the load order as well from this one. It's very, very similar actually to the last mod pack we made. But I've got a lot of other sort of quality of life stuff. A lot more of stuff that you might consider OP. Like the expanded prosthetics mod as well. But... We might not see too much of that. So the whole point of this series is I want to see how big a prison we can build. Because a lot of my friends in Discord have been playing uh, Prison Architect recently. So I kind of wanted to take my own sort of spin on that. And then I thought we needed something a bit more interesting. I think maybe like a drugs prison. Maybe like, uh, maybe like a super authoritarian prison where the warden lives in luxury. And then I thought, well, the best way to do that is just be a goddamn vampire lord, right? So we'll have one main vampire and then maybe like two thralls. Now we do have the prison labor mod. So I'm hoping that the prisoners can do the majority of the stuff for us here, and then we'll have, like, other sub-vampires, like lower-level vampires, acting as, like, our prison guards, that type of thing. So we could just customize the standard... Uh, so we've got the Vampire Strange Cargo start here, added by the Rim of Madness Vampire mod. You awaken after a crash landing on a remote planet on the rim. Looking around, you see yourself in another colonist. Between the both of you is a sealed coffin. Okay. So, we get what exactly? The sun's power is weakened, and night is lengthened by 10%. That sounds kind of cool. Um... Non-player characters have a 5% chance to start with vampirism. So out of every raid, we do have some things like dire raids and things like that, which I'll talk about later on. But we do have a 5% chance of those big raids standing up with that many people, which could be fairly significant with, like I was saying, dire raids with that amount of people could be fairly impressive. So we do start with three people, but one of them is a vampire. We've got Prepare Carefully, so I will be using that one this time around, because this isn't going to be such a hardcore series, but I do want to keep some of the challenge that we had from last time, because it's obviously very fun, right? Let's dive in. So, uh, Storyteller. I think we'll just go for, like, a Cassandra rough to start off with, just so I can get a hang in the mod pack and some of the new mods we've got in here, because it would kind of start to die instantly, right, huh? We I think we've had enough of that to last us a while. And then we'll ramp up the difficulty as we go through so that it is constantly changing and evolving and hopefully staying as interesting as possible. Let's go for, um... What do we think? I'll, I think I think I'll go reload anytime mode because it's a bit more of a traditional one. Although I probably won't ever reload. It's just for recording purposes. Say if it crashes or whatever, we're not we're not stuck with half a video going out or anything like that. Globe coverage. I'm a big fan of the lower globe coverage types. It means you're a bit more directly interacting with the various factions on the map as well, and they're a bit more impactful on the story. You know, if there's only like five or six different bases in your immediate area rather than the whole goddamn world. Let's go for like a let's go for like a fifteen percent coverage. I quite like those. Plus, it makes gaming a little bit faster too. World type. Um, honestly, I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, Rimworld planet. We've got desert planet, dry arctic, earth light. Let's try an earth light then, which ironically lowers the water level below the watery planet. But that's okay. We'll go for that one. Sure. And there we go. Wow. Uh, this one might be a little bit too small, but you know what? That's okay, because we've got a lot of various communities here we can interact with that type of thing. So we've got ourselves the monkey tributary. Incredible name. Fantastic. We've got. Edeva? Ed, 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 Edeva? It doesn't matter. It's not important. We've got Holland. Uh, we've got the Red Crag. We've got Bagu. We've got uh, the Persecution Stone. Fantastic. Either way, it doesn't matter too much because we're going to be enemies with all of these people, most likely, because we're a horrible vampire. Um, let's stick ourselves down somewhere where I guess the growing time needs to be pretty good for, you know, our many, many prisoners. If we're going to go for having just the biggest colony possible, I, well, I've got to rephrase that. We're not going to have the biggest colony, but we are obviously going to have the most prisoners. Don't directly add to the colony, but they will, you know, we're still going to have to feed the damn things, right? Um, what have we got then that's, that's good for growing time? 40 out of 60 days, I think, is going to be our maximum here. We do have Dub's Hygiene mod, so we do need to worry about water supply and things like that. What about, like, if we perch on this river? I do like the idea of this one here, because this is technically a sea here, an inland sea, because it was on an eastern coast, and all the rivers drain into it. Let's go for this one. 
that seems okay. Rainfall is fairly average. The growing period is, is exactly average. The temperature is also very average. It's a very average start for what is going to be a very average playthrough. Let's prepare carefully. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is take these guys away. Because apparently they add to the prepare carefully. Let's me pressing C thinking I'm playing CK2 here. Uh, apparently these guys do add to the, uh, the points limit. Not that we're probably going to use it. But I worried that they might have some other effects on the world. You know, like extra characters lying around. So... Let's start then. Do we have any sort of characters I can just base, basically load in here? Oh my god, we could bring him back for a redemption arc. Jilp, number eight. I have had to disable the extra... Um, Jilp eight was the one who didn't die, actually. So this is kind of a cool story for him. It's all coming together in my head cannon now. Uh, so I want to say that the facial stuff actually doesn't work with the vampire stuff because the vampire stuff adds a lot of unique vampire-based appearances based on what type of vampire you go for. So I think this is loosely based on the uh, the sort of World of Darkness vampire, the masquerade-style vampires. In fact, it might be directly based on that. I don't know because I don't, don't have a huge amount of experience with the game. So let's add a health condition. And let's see what we've got. Now, we've also got some other fun mods as well. Like the, the, the bone mod is kind of fun where you can build like literal bone thrones and like bone furniture and stuff because I thought that's, that's somewhat vampire right? Sort of mired in death. So we've got Gangrel, Gargoyle, Lasombra, Nosferatu, uh, Piyavika, Random, Tremory, Tsimiski, and Ventro. I don't know what any of these mean. We're going to go random because I honestly have no idea which one is best there. Thin-blooded. So the only thing I do know about this is, is the more generations you are detached from the first vampire, which was Cain, right? Uh, the more generations you are away from that, the weaker you become. So... I'm thinking we go for like a powerful or an overpowered thing because we're probably only going to have one vampire. And we'll save the vampirism for like really, really good characters. So like we, we won't just waste it on somebody who's got like six cooking, for example. Like we might in base game rumbled. Um, Let's go for this 7th to ninth generation powerful. I don't want to be too overpowered, so we'll avoid the one that literally says it's overpowered. There we go. We've got decent line of strong constitution. You are going to be Jilp 8, but you will just be named Jilp. You are no clone anymore, my friend. You have ascended. All right, then we've got Mal the Roboticist. I think we'll probably do a little bit of random on these guys. Huh? Um, let's see what we can get. Anything capable of, uh, as long as they are, you know, capable of, of everything. I'm, I'm pretty happy to roll with them no matter what. Let's get rid of that. So we've got decent line of psychopath and teetotaler is pretty good. You are just going to be the uh, town cook. Now you got to bear in mind we don't need to cook for the vampire, but this guy's going to be, I guess we could have him like, that's okay. We don't need to worry about too much beyond that, right? He's got fairly okay construction. I'll give him a few points of mining so he's not completely useless. So what do we need? We need ourselves a good doctor, a good grower, and maybe a good crafter as well. So that's what this guy can be. Let's just roll him a second, and that will do. All right, let's lower that one down. So we need a good grower, crafter, and doctor, did I say? I'm pretty sure that was it. We'll just try and fill our niches here. And then we'll go for a medical as well. Think about the vampire. will crank up his social. I mean, this job already has sort of that anyway. Uh, we do have Combat Extended. Also worth pointing out, I did stick with Combat Extended, but I made some pretty significant changes to it that I'll talk about when we get on to things. Uh, Biological Age 28 is a vampire, so we'll go for, like, chronicle, a Chronological Age of, like, how about 750? That seems about right. Okay, that's perfect. The shooting melee construction. Yeah, that seems good. Let me just make sure we've got no gaps in the lineup here. I'm also going to get rid of this, otherwise you're fucking pointless, huh? Um, it's got way too many traits, so we'll get rid of this one. All right. Uh, that's looking pretty good. So we've got Postman. I do like that name. Um... What could we go for? Is there any sort of relevant characters from previous series that didn't actually die or we didn't lose permanently? I can't think of any off the top of my head. So I'm going to give you guys some, some incredible random names what I am good at. You're going to be called uh, Van. Van. Uh, Van. 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 Trun. Van. Truna. Van Truna. Perfect name. And we're just going to call you Van for short. And then Mal is already pretty good. We're going to stick with Mal as your first name. Um, you are going to be called Mal, Mal, Pom, 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 Pomry. <laughs> Mal Pomry, there we go. We got Van Trunner, Mal Pomry, and then of course Jill Bondle. Fantastic. That is that is a hell of a lineup right there, huh? So what do we actually start with in terms of equipment here? We start with the Lee Enfield Ruger Red Hawk. We start with the Fumar Direwolf. I don't really want the Direwolf. I'm going to be honest with you. Um... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather... Can I, can I swap out the Dire Wolf and, like, these guns for something slightly better? Is that a fair trade? If we get rid of those and maybe just get something a little more decent for the time being? Blue Synthaline Club. What the hell is all this stuff? Um, God, there's so much to see. Oh, my God. This is a lot of weapons, huh? I kind of want to just go for the more sort of standard uh, combat extended weapons that we saw in the, in the other series. I don't want to go for anything super, super powerful during the early game, but at least something better than this goddamn Ruger Red Hawk would be kind of nice. Um, I saw my points and just sort of go for something middling points. So we'll put it like literally right here and just pick the first gun we see, I guess. Um, 
go for a Taurus Judge. Oh, these are the garbage ones. How about, like, uh, SKS? A couple of SKS seem fine to me. I don't think the vampire needs a gun. It's a vampire. That should be very straightforward. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a fine layout. And let's dive straight in. Oh, you know what? Just in case we do die, I'm going to save this preset as vampire. There we go. All right. Technically still Jilp, obviously. Jilp the vampire now. Jilp 8. Uh, left for dead, reborn anew as a horrible vampire lord who wants his vengeance. I can only assume it's going to be this sort of backstory I'll come up for this one. Let's dive in. So, like I said, I want to just gather as many prisoners as possible. That should be a goal, because then we've also got the, the sort of aspect... Oh, this is a nice map. We've also got things to deal with, like pr prison management is going to be a big one. It also means we don't have to worry about prisoners impacting... Or, sorry, getting a load of crappy colonists that we don't want, and that, in turn, impacting the... Uh, the, you know, the power of raids that turn up and the amount of people that we have to entertain and, and give joy to because prisoners don't need that, apparently. Uh, plus, it also kind of suits the whole vampire thing that they would just keep, you know, a bunch of uh, bunch of old prisoners around. Okay, cool. Here we are. Let's allow all. Now, I want to set myself a personal goal, and a lot of you are going to be either very happy to hear this or um, completely indifferent. I'm going to try and build not using wood this time around. I feel like that's something that always catches me out. Every goddamn series is spending ages. I'm going to build in, like, this area. What do you think about that? Just put it in, like, this, connecting up to the river. I think that's a pretty good area. I'm going to try and not build too much out of wood this time. Because every series, I fall into that trap. And I say this as well, every series. That I start building things out of wood. And then say, oh, we'll start, we'll stop using wood soon. We'll replace things soon. And we actually never get around to it. I'm going to try and not do that this time around. So we're going to actually turn this into our base right here. Now, obviously, I'm going to build, okay, smart ass. I am going to build furniture, uh, the, the early furniture and, you know, early doors and things out of wood as much as possible. But outside of that, we're going to be very careful about things. So what mods do we have enabled that I can immediately see right here that I might want to talk about? Um, we have labor area. Obviously, the prison labor mod is going to be massive. Like I said, I kind of want to do a whole prison simulator with this one. We've got blueprints mod obviously making its return there. Bone walls. There is actually room of madness bones that allows you to build bone walls, bone. Uh, there's a lot of different bone alloys as well, so you get stronger variants of this. Uh, so it actually becomes like a practical, defensible thing as well, along with you know bone furniture, bone throne, that type of thing. What is a? Excuse me. What is a maggots breeder? This ne necrophagus maggots can grow and reproduce an unbelievable efficiency. Leave them with some antiseptic corpses to limit their appetite, so they won't consume too much food and starve themselves. Oh, planter. A corpse is the best source of nutrition for plants, and a coffin is also the perfect planting box with 214% for... Okay, so this is the mod that allows corpses to still be useful after uh, after they're dead, so we can actually do things with corpses. I thought that was nice and immoral. That sort of also suits the vampire and the theme of, like, death and decay and things. Like the skull throne. I would really like to build this skull throne. It takes a thousand bones, though. I don't know what the, we've got the bones set to. We've, we have played with this mod before, briefly on a live stream, and, uh, like, getting bones on that was seemed fairly difficult. So we've also got the gloomy furniture mod. Again, we're playing vampires, so that made the most sense to me. Um, we've got extra furniture. There's a quite a cool module that came out recently uh, for, for this sub-mod, I believe. It's like the medical module or something like that. Uh, of course, we've got regular furniture there. We've got power. Human power generator. So I don't just want to use them for prison labor. Actually making them self-sufficient would be kind of cool. So getting these guys to sit on bikes all day if they've got nothing else to do seems like kind of a cool... It might be a little bit OP, but seems like kind of a cool little extra thing you could do. Have, have humans literally cycling. We've also got some other stuff that, that are man-powered, but we'll talk about that later on as well. That's something for the much later game. To various coffins here. Blood soil. What is that? Soil fertilized with blood and flesh with 175% fertility. That's not weird at all. This is very macabre, isn't it, huh? A little bit, a little bit weird. We've got Rim Atomics. So I went with Rim Atomics and Rim Fella, both of which are sort of the more industrial-based mods, like a nuclear one, and then there's one that's, you know, dedicated to the, the production of things. Those work with the Hygiene mod. They're all by the same uh, mod author, uh, which is Dubs, I think it is. Uh, so this all working together does make sense. I will have to go into the mod menu at some time, but between episodes and just sort of set them up so they work with one another. For now, we don't have to worry about it because it's literally like Luke, nuclear power, and I don't think we're going to be doing that anytime soon. All right, let's get to work then, team. So, Vampire is asleep. Should we, should we click the Awaken button? Welcome, Jilp. What are you? A spaceship salesman. I mean, besides that, though. Oh, God. Jilp, you look so different to when I last saw you. Um, what is that thing? Okay, um, let's just take a look here. So, we'll go bio. Uh, does it say what he is? It's like health, right? Vampirism, obviously. Uh, what type? Oh, he's a gargoyle. Sure. And then his sire, you can see the person who turned him into a vampire, was a guy called Myers Urchin. So that person actually might count as, I guess, a relation to Jilp, maybe? So, so you know when you get a raid and it'll pop up saying relation, it might actually say, like, sire of Jilp. So he's an elder, eighth, gener eighth generation there. That's very, very cool. Okay, I don't know what soak amount is there, though. Hopefully the vampire mod and combat extended work quite well, well together. 
So one thing about vampires, if you've never played this mod before, it's actually super, super well designed. And there's like a whole RPG sort of leveling up system we'll get onto in a minute. So vampires don't eat food. They drink blood. And there's a couple of different settings we can go for that. So the bigger our colony gets, we might be able to do some of these other ones. So we've got, uh, this determines their blood feed mode. So you can see they're animal, non-lethal. They'll drain enough from the animal to sort of make themselves satiated, but they won't do too much that it kills the animal. Then you can get, uh, animal lethal. So they will literally drain the animal to death before moving on to the next one. We've got humanoid, non-lethal. So our two meat bags here, they can use as feeding, which is better than feeding on animal animals. And then you've got humanoid lethal. So if we get a big enough colony with enough people that could be something we, we might want to consider and that's obviously the best way to do things here so the coolest part outside of that is i believe if we go over to where is it it's the bio tab there's this button vampire skill sheet and this is really well designed if you've if you've seen the room of magic or maybe even the star wars mod is a bit closer to this one this might look very similar to you so we can actually invest into different skills and different skill trees here you got the four different skill trees you have to upgrade obviously this one before you can upgrade that one shit i didn't realize clicking on that one would spend the point but okay never mind then it's probably okay flight sounds pretty good huh um You've got four different skill trees here, all of which obviously give different passive and active bonuses. So this one, for example, passively boosts the carrying capacity and allows the user to cast flight. How do we do that, huh? I guess if we unpause it, my update. We've got uh, bat form, become one with the children of night, gain its ability to fly with great speed. That's very, very cool as well. And the bottom one is fortitude, so vampires being a lot more, you know, quicker reflexes, but are stronger. Guarantees shrugging off four points of damage from attacks. Not sure how well that works with combat extended, but I guess that remains to be seen. We've got other things like wing buffet. Well, wing buffet, I guess. Wing buffet. It's very different. Wing buffet, so he's going to hit them with his wings. We've got uh, short flight. We've got skyfall. Picks them and carries a character high up into the ground and then drops them for massive. That's seismic toss. Cool. Feral claws. We've got mist form. That sounds very cool. And war form. Oh, shit. Wow. You assume a colossal visage suitable for fighting an enemy horde. That sounds awesome. Why the hell did I not spend all my points on that? This is my promise to you, people watching. We're going exactly for this one. This is where all my points go, and I don't care if the other ones are way more useful. Dear streamer, please make him not die. No, we can go for war form, though. We've also got disciplines. Okay, so vampires obviously burn in sunlight. It's a very traditional vampire, right? So if we, uh, if, if we go, say, relax, they can go outside... Uh, during sunlight. However, if it gets too much for them, they're going to have to run under cover. And, and as it says there, they might become trapped. It's kind of like, how would I describe it? I guess it's kind of like hypothermia for the base game room world, right? Where they're constantly run to cover or run to seek a safe temperature. In this case, it's going to be darkness for the vampires. That one, restrict. This will, vampire will not go outdoors during daylight hours unless drafted and forced to do so. Or we've got no AI, at which point they'll just carry on as a regular room world character would and they will actually burn to death if you leave them unattended. So that's kind of a cool system. So different vampires obviously have different abilities. There are like six different races of vampires, something like that. Some are better at social stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on, he's just draining the blood out of poor Mal there. Mal Pomery. Goodbye, Mal Pomery. Jilt Vondel must feed. A vengeful Jilt Vondel. That, so you can see there that he's not getting enough blood from one of them. They, they don't like actually start bleeding out from that. Oh, it just cancels blood loss. That's good. As long as it's not like a permanent damage. So for the time being, I think it would be best to set Jilp, seeing as it's not the winter or anything like that, would be best to set Jilp to probably just drain animals, like lethal drain animals or something like that, and these guys can just farm for themselves. So you can see his, his Vitae there is increasing as he feeds, but if he feeds on animals, it's going to increase less than if he feeds on a human. Right, so let's get a base built, or let's at least, I guess, repurpose some of these other buildings. So like I said, Let's avoid building out of marble. Or, sorry, let's avoid building out of wood. Marble is fine. I actually want to build out of marble, which is what I was going to suggest here. So we'll start deconstructing this and build it into an actual building, kind of close to a river. D are vampires thirsty? What a great question. Uh, vampires do care about hygiene. Okay, so maybe not in terms of thirst then. What are the other guys? Yeah, vampires don't have a thirst bar. That's cool. That's a really nice... I don't know whether that's intentional. I don't know whether that's just a bug between one mod and the other. But that would be so awesome if they're intentionally interacting together properly like that. Cool. Right, so let's set up some schedules as well. Then we could do with night owls. Night owls are actually going to be super important for the colony because, you know, a vampire can't, you know, work at night. So if we've got a nice mixture of night owls and regular characters, that'd be pretty good. Obviously, you don't really want night owls in the base game because they have different schedules, different recreation times, that type of thing. And it, it's kind of worse for social interaction, especially. But in this one, I'm more than happy to go for that. Right, so let's give them a, let's give them all three hours, I don't know, recreation there. That's fine. I'll, I'll work on the schedule a bit better later on. So they're going to be working six till six hours of recreation. Is that not way too much sleep, was it? No, it's really not. Okay, that's fine. Go on then. Go about your business. Although it is nighttime now, obviously, so only Jilp can do things. What is Jilp doing right now? Just having a nice relax. Oh, because he's set to, set to work. 
Oh, hang on a minute, genius. Let's try and set up the work tabs. Okay, so manual priorities here. Let's go balls to the wall with this and get this all set up basically immediately, right? Um, so doctor is van. Bed rest will set maximum for everybody. We'll uh, put those up to maximum as well. I'll try and work on them all at the same time here, sort of simultaneously. You guys can pick me up on any mistakes I make as well, as you'll probably want to do. Right, basic finish rearm. This is all fine to go up to tier one, to be honest with you. In fact, I'm probably not going to use traps. I don't really see the point of using traps, especially during the early game. I'm still not entirely convinced. I think the changes during the beta, when they made it so traps weren't reusable, I think that def definitely killed it in some way. So, Jill has a skill of 8. I think the Vampire as the Warden and the Jailer seems a little more appropriate. Don't get me wrong, we could do both. There's no reason not to do both, to be honest with you. We don't really want animals either. So, Butcher and Cooking can be top priority. Brewing we're not interested in right this second. Hunting, I guess only these two would be appropriate for that because Jilp is... Jilp could hunt, but he has no need to hunt, you know? And that's something that his his little slaves here, his little scions, his thralls will do for him instead. Construct. Um, actually, everyone's pretty good at constructing. I guess we want our best guy to do it, though, just so that we're wasting less resources. So we'll set that to, like, tier 4. I mean, instead, what we want to do rather than construction is set them up to a higher delivery, which means they will take the resources to the builder. I'm just assuming people haven't seen the last series, by the way. Um, right, and let's also do that one, and let's set those. You know, everybody can repair. I'm actually fine with that. Harvesting and growing. Again, we probably want to have our maximum best guy on harvesting. And then the other guy's on, on quite high grow, actually. That, that could be fairly useful. Harvesting, Jilp can do a little bit to help out with that, but you definitely cannot. Right, mining, quarrying, drilling. Uh, for now, I'll turn those off until we actually have a need for resources. Plant cut, I always like having on the maximum. Let's get rid of drugs. Let's get rid of all this garbage, too, because we're not going to use these for a while. Okay, perfect. I think we're basically good to go at that stage. Don't need any of these either. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Crafting, we'll put that to the lowest. And same with these as well. So cremation is going to be ideally irrelevant this time around because we have so many things to do with the corpses. We could butcher them for bones. We can apparently use them as natural fertilizer, which I think, you know, waste not, want not, especially when you're on the rim like this, huh? You know, we, it's, this is literally uh, a doggy, do a, a jilpy everyone world. So you've got to be a bit more careful with how we spend our resources. Uh, cleaning, uh, I think this middle guy is kind of fairly useless, so we'll increase that. And then, of course, we'll, we'll say Jilp can research whenever he wants to. Okay, good. What about deconstruct? I'm pretty sure your skill in deconstruction doesn't affect, or your skill in construction doesn't affect the amount of resources you get, right? I'm not entirely sure on that one. You know what? Let's not worry about it. Should we just get everybody staying up at night time? It doesn't matter if they're awake during night time, does it? Oh, the darkness. That affects their work speed, doesn't it? Hmm, okay. I never considered that one too much. So keeping Jilp indoors, maybe at all times, wouldn't be such a bad idea, huh? So we can, so we can start working. Oh, shit. Hang on. Uh, it's sunlight. Can he just hide in the coffin again? Is that, is that something you can do? So we can just do, you can just enter torpor, sleep indefinitely. We don't want to do that. Is it, uh, let's keep a close eye on things here. Okay, he's now burning, right? Uh, desperately digging a hole. Oh, God. Vampire in sunlight. I thought that he could put the lid back on his coffin, seeing as that's how he started. But I guess you can only awaken him once. Oh, and let's... Wait, hang on. Enter... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's he doing? Oh, he's seeking up... What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? Stop, stop, stop. Um, okay. Well, we've got Rot Strike. Jilp, what does that mean? J yeah, okay. Why is he... Why did he not get in the coffin? Is Jilp just going to burn to death? Okay, this is bad. Um, uh, I don't really know why he's... Is he not in the darkness there? He missed it by one... Are you kidding me? You're an idiot. Okay. Uh, build. Build roof. Just build the roof over him. Go. Run, my boy. Save Jilp. Save... Where are you? Run! Anybody want to explain to me why he stopped digging that fucking hole to go and run over to the river? He was in a river! Ashes of Jilp. I thought we were through this. I thought we were over that series, but it's... it's. Can I just resurrect him? Can I just... Res can I just... <laughs> can I just resurrect him, maybe? Uh, hang on. Hang on. Bear, bear with me. Just pretend you haven't seen this. <gasps> He's back. Okay, right. Chalk that one up as a loss, team. You, you saw nothing. Oh, the, the video's glitching out. <clears throat> okay. I want to know why he stopped digging the hole to run over to... I think he was trying to get to... 
get to uh, like uh, I don't know maybe the AI found a dark area as he was digging the hole it realized oh hang on a minute there's someone I can run to and he just couldn't quite get there in time I also don't know why when I told him to get into that goddamn coffin he didn't do that either either way it doesn't matter too much we're fine we're fine nothing to worry about now I know we've got to be extremely careful about Jilp in the daytime I didn't realize he quite burst into flames as quickly as he did huh Whoops, my mistake. Uh, you still the he's still the same old jump. Nothing to worry about there. Uh, uh, please tell me it didn't reset. His god fucking damn it. Okay, right. This is this one take thirty seconds. Bear with me on this one. That's really funny. I can't I can't believe that, that he would just immediately burst into flames like that. Welcome back, Jill. Boy, how we've missed you, huh? Uh, let's set growing to higher priority than that one. In fact, it should be a higher priority on a lot of these guys then. Harvest. Uh, I think Jill is capable enough of harvesting. Okay, it's five out of twenty, right? He'll he'll botch a lot of the harvests. But I think it's better for for future, you know, to actually start building up the skills of someone else. Let's get it paused here while we sort out the rest of his jobs. Okay. Um, and then, you know, all this stuff, stuff is like premium garbage. Actually, I don't really care too much about this stuff. There we go. Good, good, good. And we're fine. I'll do the jobs properly in between an episode. How about that? All right. I'll, I'll take some breaks. As I said, after this episode, I'm going to go back to the, the regular heavy editing style that we used to have in, in RimWorld and, and sort of cut some things out. But seeing as this is sort of the introductory episode, there's probably not going to be a huge amount to cut out because we're always going to be doing stuff, right? It's not like we're waiting for research or anything. Okay, let's build a house. Uh, let's build a nice house out of some lovely marble walls. A uh, nice beachfront, be beachfront property? What? Beachfront property, I think, would be kind of nice. How much have we got here? Uh, 190 is not very much marble. I'll take that. That seems an okay size, right? That's not too bad to start off with here. Okay, let's also get a stockpile put down in that case. Um, now, we don't want to build out of wood. Like I said, that's my own personal challenge here is not to build everything out of wood all the time. Why are you guys lying around? Oh, it's recreation time. Shit. Uh, that's okay. I think Jolt by himself can probably work hard enough to get this whole base done, right? So let's put down a door here. And let's get a couple of beds down just as quick as we goddamn can. So that these guys aren't sleeping on the floor. Now, Jilp has a coffin. I assume he has to sleep in a coffin. I, I, I would assume he can't use a human bed. So let's reinstall that one in the base as well. There we go. Okay. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic start. It's not like we lost our main and most important character. You saw nothing, okay? If I see a single comment saying, Oh my god, Jilp died in the first episode. What a goddamn loser, giant idiot streamer. I'm gonna I'm turning the series around, young man. That's all I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna say on the matter. Right, bring this all over as soon as possible, because I don't really want 30 components deteriorating because I forgot about them. Oh shit, same story with the guns, really. You guys should probably just go ahead and equip that, huh? Wake up and equip these guns. Right, Jilp, how are we doing? It's almost daytime, my friend. So, uh, it's, it's about time for you to do your daily burning to death and then me saying, Oh, I no idea what happened. Right. Hide there. Is he good? Okay, yeah, he's just gonna sleep on the floor again. That's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong. We'll have a, we'll have a roof done before tomorrow. We've got enough marble as it is. We're just obviously waiting for them to install it all now. Good. What are those? Buffalo? Bison? What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off at school? <clears throat> I think you want to know where that's going. Okay, let's put down a st 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 stone cutting table. Excuse me? There it is, stone cutting table. Uh, it's difficult to be able... I've, I've not played Rimworld in quite a long time, so it's been, it's been a whole day since I last played Rimworld, so I might be a little bit rusty here. Right, let's put that down. And Honestly, let's put a couple down. Let's put a couple down, because I'm not going to do any more building until, like I said, we've got the marble to do so. I'm not falling into this trap once again. Good God. I can't I can't deal with ripping the whole base down mid-series once again. Perfect. Okay. And then we also probably want to put down, if we go to furniture, a couple of chairs, because they're going to be sat there for quite a goddamn time. Uh, let's also put down... So I've also got, by the way, you, you might be able to tell from this, I've got... The, there's a really cool mod in the workshop that's called, like, Masking Mod. Uh, so what it does is it actually adds color to some of the default RimWorld sort of workstations there. So you can actually see the, the contrast between the wood and the stone. Normally it's all just one big color. Whereas in this, it, it looks separate. So it's kind of a nice little mod if you're interested in the high fidelity of RimWorld graphics that we all know and love. That real AAA feeling. Death drip. Get right, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Cave Tender from the Tribe of Babor. Is he wanting to perhaps join us as a permanent prisoner? Is he good? He is very good. Wow. Um, is he good enough to turn into a vampire? Well... With a crafting of 11, cooking of almost 10, melee of 8. I mean, vampires meleeing seems the most appropriate. I very much doubt a, a vampire is going to be a big fan of using, what, like a shotgun or something. Doesn't seem very vampire-y, does it? Hey, there we go. We have a, a nice safe space for Jump not to melt to death, and that's fantastic. Okay, then. So, base is down. Good. What do we need to do with this? High calcium protein powder. Large maggots. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Tasty. Um, let's go for... What about some, like, additional fun? I'm just trying to think what would be good early game. Oh, shit. Hang on. Don't fall into this trap again. Good God. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's put down a bathroom as soon as possible. I'm not falling into this trap again. Gotta remember we are playing with uh, the additional hygiene mod. So we need, like, a basin 
Um, we need like uh, a shower and some things as well there. We'll, we'll, we'll try and put down an actual bathroom. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea, huh? So we'll go like that one. Try and make it nice as, as, as compact as possible here. There we go. And then when we get enough marble, we can just expand all this out into a into a dedicated bedroom if you want. Or a dedicated bathroom, sorry. Slip in there if you want. That's not going to bother me. Okay, so how do we get water? We want a wind pump. Everybody keeps telling me about how good the wind pumps are. Or at least did tell me last series about how good the wind pumps are. In fact, building on the beach was actually a good idea because it means we could put down a shit ton of wind power. And we don't have to worry about, you know, sort of the upkeep of the plants and stuff. Let's put that there. Um, let's put down a... So what is it? It's, it's the wind pump you connect up to a water well. Right, that's a good plan. Put this one there. And then we just plumb all that in, right? So we should be able to just go straight like that. I think that's good. That's a nice compact little bathroom. Not using up too many resources. What's Job up to these days? Gonna try and at least start work on the bedroom. That's a great idea, Job. Thank you very much. All right, let's get this bathroom plumbed in. If we can get that done by today, you know what? I think that's a that's a pretty big game for the colony, right? We've got enough resources to build these two. It's just a case of Job hopefully not botching the construction because he's not that good in hindsight. Oh, you know, it's gonna go to construction skill level seven. Nice. Okay. Since it looks like you'll be here for a while, just ignore that first bit where we're all burnt to death. Job thinks you should give your faction a name. What should it be called? You know what? Leave me some suggestions for what you think this faction should be called. And leave me some suggestions for what you think this particular settlement should be called as well. Very interested in hearing your feedback. I haven't got any good names off the top of my head. I wasted my good names on, on Van whatever his name was and, and the other guy. So what we can do is just call it any old garbage. There you go. How about that for a good name? And then we can just rename it whenever the hell we feel like because this additional mod we've got. So uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. Like I said, I wasted my name on Mel Pomery and Van Trunner. So... Let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this idea. Hope you guys are enjoying this episode as well. Can't wait to build the world's biggest vampire prison camp of all time. Haven't really got an end game goal. I think we're just going to play until we lose, ideally. And that's sort of how Rimworld should be played, right? I haven't got any alternate win conditions. Oh, I did have an idea for an alternate Rimworld condition. Uh, win condition. But we'll talk about that later on. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made the series possible in the first place. Patrons, if you have any vampire based names you'd like to throw at me, feel free to. I'll also ask in Discord just for those of you who might have missed this message. Big shout out to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Amosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyol, Blurry Bunny, Sidini, Conspiracy, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Fukuna Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lendine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nathan Forrest, Necrofilm, Powers Presley, Surf All the Swedes, Sorogon, Toby Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Packers, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support. The Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. It is most appreciated. Hope you guys enjoy this series idea, this creepy vampire bone corpse strewn place. And of course, a shout out as well to Asro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson. All of this was UK. Arachne44, Betamus Max, Ben Troke, Sidini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Kony 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders. Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerka, Gray, Haji Damar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Llewellyn Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Nixie, Pantamu, Panthpearl, Smirtworm, The Insane Pickle, Venom Meow, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico 2, it's official. The Patreon list now has a scroll bar. Good God. And this is in like tiny 11 point font on my monitor as well. So that's, uh, that's fairly impressive. Thank you all for that. That's, that's really good. 